Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's start with the Anthony Joshua fight. We'll throw in a bonus here, right? Let me say this about the Anthony Joshua fight. Boxing's a business. From time to time, promoters are going to tell you that their fighter is going to fight a bigger name and then literally have public exhibitions, have public sparring sessions where the young fighter fights a stiff, right? The idea is you're going to buy the exhibition. You're going to allow the fighter to make money. You're going to pay for the fighter's training, right? While keeping an eye on the real fight. Now here, that's exactly what happened. Anthony Joshua was fighting a guy who really was just a sparring partner level of opponent, in my opinion, right? They kept telling you that this guy, of course, had gone several rounds with Shannon Briggs. Let's be clear on Shannon Briggs. You know, Shannon Briggs fought Lennox Lewis, who's been retired for more than a decade, right, for the heavyweight title in the 1990s. Shannon Briggs is in his 40s. Going 10 rounds with Shannon Briggs isn't exactly a big litmus test. Take a look at some of Shannon Briggs' recent opponents. Who are they? Right? These are guys you never heard of before the Shannon Briggs fight. I don't see Shannon Briggs fighting real contenders. Right? So the fact that this guy who Anthony Joshua fought went a few rounds with Shannon Briggs, all I can say is BFD. Who cares? Right? This guy was there to get hit. We learned really nothing from the fight. Joshua didn't have to bend his waist once. Right? Big deal. Joshua hits this guy with a right counter after the guy lazily sticks a jab out there and lets it linger. Big deal. Right? The purpose of this fight really wasn't to test Anthony Joshua, it was just to give Joshua a payday before his matchup with Kevin Johnson. Let me say this, I have yet to see the Joshua fight where I feel the guy has advanced skills. I know the guy is big, I know the guy is strong, I don't know anything else about him. Kevin Johnson by far is going to be his toughest opponent. Let's remember, Kevin Johnson went a few rounds, in fact he went the distance not against some mailman or a guy on the side of a milk carton or some guy you never heard of or some guy you barely heard of. No, Kevin Johnson went the distance against Vitaly Klitschko. Now granted, it was years ago when Johnson was younger and fresher. But let's just say if Anthony Joshua comes in on his front foot, he might find that his opponent isn't going to fall down in the first three rounds. Then he's going to be in uncharted water, right? So view me as a skeptic of Anthony Joshua. Quite frankly, I don't really learn a lot watching glorified sparring sessions like the one they just showed this weekend. Let's talk about James Kirkland and let's talk about Canelo. Now, let me say this. If I knew Kirkland and I were a friend of James Kirkland's, I would say to Kirkland, player, you need to retire, right? Kirkland's too young to be, in my opinion, slurring his speech. Understand the way brain injury works, right? Your coordination starts to go a little today. It's later in life. You don't have to take another punch, right? It's later in life that you notice that you're deteriorating faster than you should, that you're aging faster than you should, that that a little bit off-kilter coordination now becomes a big off-kilter problem. I'll tell you what, James Kirkland, I was listening to him in interviews and I was asking myself, what did he just say? What's he saying? You know, all of us use gimmicks to be understood. 
James Kirkland now is talking out the side of his mouth like this, right? I'm concerned about James Kirkland's speech. In boxing, it's taboo to talk about it. I'm talking about it right here. Let me say this too. Kirkland, at this stage, has no awareness, and I mean no awareness, of defense. He doesn't even sense the punches on the way in. Right? He's there. It's not like he's moving away from a left hand and it hits him anyway. Right? It's not even like his opponent's threading the needle where Kirkland has a guard up and the opponent's getting around the guard. No, Kirkland in fighting Canelo seems to have absolutely no understanding. That's all Alvarez can throw left hands. That's all Alvarez can throw uppercuts. As I was watching this fight, I was wondering myself, has Kirkland even watched a film of Saul Alvarez? This is one of those rare times where if the guy after the fight said, you know, I didn't watch any film, I might believe him. Kirkland seemed unprepared. He seemed unaware. He's getting hit flush. He's making no adjustments. Case in point, take that Canelo uppercut I was talking about. Right? How many uppercuts do you have to get hit with before you come up with an arm bar? Before you start looking at his hands, which Canelo's keeping low at times, where you start looking at his hands and say, hey, his hand's low, let me look for an uppercut. Right? We never see Kirkland go like this to block an uppercut. We never see Kirkland tuck his chin to give his opponent nothing to hit. Understand, you don't necessarily have to track the punch to block the uppercut. You can tuck a chin so we can't hit it, and then you could just cover part of your face, right? You could protect where the punch is supposed to land. Kirkland does none of that. None of it. He thinks like a hunter. He's going to come in, walk you down, throw big punches. At this level of the sport, that doesn't work. You've got to consider defense. You've got to consider real head movement. You've got to consider tucking your chin. Now let's talk about Canelo. Many of you here online have asked me about my thoughts about a possible Canelo Cotto matchup. Let me just say this. Just like in the fight involving Cotto's older brother against Canelo, keep in mind a Cotto family member has already fought Canelo. I encourage you to look at the first round of that fight. Just like in that fight, Canelo here gets backed up early. Now let's just say when Canelo gets backed up, it doesn't feel like Ali up against the ropes. It doesn't feel like Mayweather up against the ropes. It doesn't feel like James Tony up against the ropes. No, Canelo is backed up. He's not defensively blessed. He's a bit stiff. He's a bit upright. And he's barely surviving against James Kirkland. Did Canelo not know that James Kirkland was going to try to back him up? James Kirkland, who has no back foot game that I'm aware of? Well, Canelo gets backed up. And you know the rest. The fighters get tangled up. Let's just say Kirkland's not throwing the straightest punches I've seen in my life. And Canelo is able to survive the onslaught early in the first round. Folks, that's troubling. Right? That's troubling. You can move away from Canelo. You can also back him up. 
right? Canelo also, and this fight's not the longest fight. Even in this fight, Canelo needs to take off parts of rounds, doesn't he? There's always a part in a Canelo round where he's not throwing that many punches. Where the other guy has him backed up and Canelo seems to be resting. Now, I would expect that from, you know, 50-year-old Bernard Hopkins or late 40s, whatever Hopkins is. Right? I would expect that from a guy in his late 30s, Floyd Mayweather. Okay, great. You know, you're an older fighter, you're fighting a young lion, and you need to make sure you pace yourself. I get it. I don't get it when you're the young lion. Right? I don't. I don't get it when you're not that defensively gifted. What do I mean by that? As obvious as Kirkland was. Let's be clear here. James Kirkland lands a higher percentage of his punches against Canelo than Manny Pacquiao, with much faster hands, landed against Floyd Mayweather. Right? So Canelo is there getting hit. Let's also be clear on Kirkland. Hadn't fought in several months, doesn't have his trainer in his corner. Right? Is rusty. Is with a new group. Right? And according to reports, had to lose a lot of weight in training camp. So understand this Kirkland is really not prime Kirkland. He's not fully ready. Right? He's not. He's rusty. Hasn't fought since the Tapia fight. You remember how long ago that was? And even here, Canelo gets backed up, just like he was by Cotto's brother. He has some rough moments in that first round. When you look at the first round, in my opinion, a key moment in that first round is Kirkland comes in, he's throwing punches, then curiously, and I say curiously, the referee separates them. I'm not sure why. Then after Kirkland gets back on his front foot, because what else is he going to do? He has no back foot game. After Kirkland gets back on his front foot, Canelo then is able to start landing shots and to start dominate, dominating the fight. So let me just say, I personally would take Cotto over Canelo. Right? Cotto can fight low. Cotto has the superior foot movement. Cotto is the superior athlete, even now in his 30s, right? I don't see Cotto fights where Cotto is taking off parts of every round, like Saul Alvarez is. I don't see the Cotto fight where he gets hit repeatedly with a jab, like Austin Trout hit Canelo, right? Also, understand, Cotto hides his chin. Cotto hides his body. Don't confuse an opponent like a Miguel Cotto with a guy who doesn't. In James Kirkland. Right? So, I'll give Canelo credit. We all knew he had punching power. I'll give Canelo credit on landing the big punches that he had to land. Very impressive. Right? I'll be the most shocked man in America if he's able to land some of these wide arching, wide angle shots against Miguel Cotto. I want you to look at the wind up Canelo does in throwing uppercuts. Let's just say it's not the most quick or subtle uppercut I've seen. It's because of the limitations of his opponent that these wide angle shots, these wind up shots are landing. There's a reason why you didn't see Canelo landing uppercuts against Floyd Mayweather. So put me among those who's still a bit of a skeptic on Saul Alvarez and who certainly believes that James Kirkland, who isn't fighting that often as it is, who doesn't have the best chin in the gym, right? 
whose speech is not the model of clarity that James Kirkland at this stage in his career, even though he isn't that old, should really think about his future, should really think about whether he wants to continue fighting. There are going to be nights where he's going to overpower some guy who can't handle an aggressive southpaw with an inside game. Okay, great. Right? But still, when you hear him talk, and when you see his lack of awareness and lack of reflexes of punches coming back, you really have to wonder if this guy is going to be okay when his boxing career ends. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.